Hello and welcome. This is Codex.Games, bringing you the latest from the world of gaming. In today's episode, we'll be talking about a Torchlight Infinite Special. Berserk Blade Thea. A detailed guide to 2.1 billion damage. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back. Thea is a character that heavily relies on blessings to scale her damage output. Her traits revolve around blessings. Gain, stack, and consume blessings. That's probably why she begins with the ability to passively gain focus, agility, and tenacity blessing every two seconds subsequently. Although this is a small aspect in the bigger picture of the build, it's still important to be aware of. Let's quickly run through Thea's skill. The Divine Punishment. This is a circular area of effect skill that deals damage to enemies from above. To cast it, simply press the F key. It consumes all of your tenacity, agility, and focus blessings. The focus here, however, is not on the skill's AoE damage, but rather the chain effects that are triggered when Divine Punishment is activated. The buffs we get are, plus 10% extra damage for each stack of tenacity on the next main skill cast, plus 15% increased skill area per focus blessing, and plus 7% enhanced cooldown recovery for each stack of agility blessing. In this build, we take advantage of plus 8% total damage per stack of any blessing consumed, which can reach up to 200% at 25 consumed blessings. The effect is indicated by this icon appearing after Divine Punishment is cast, and the number indicating the blessings consumed. Aside from the buff, there are two additional information to take away from here. First, the buff has a duration of 4 seconds. And second, the cooldown for Divine Punishment is 9 seconds. These will be further discussed in later sections of the video, but it's important to note that our objective is to maintain the buff active at all times. Let's take a look at Thea's kit. At level 13, she unlocks the final prophecy. It adds plus 5% additional damage for each stack of focus blessing consumed recently. Notice that it says up to 25%. This means that with only 5 focus blessings consumed, you've already maximized this buff. Moving ahead to level 32, where we are given to choose either Predicted Harvest, or Predicted Judgment. While Predicted Judgment applies attack and defense debuffs to enemies, Predicted Harvest is the clear choice for any build. Predicted Harvest gives us 50% chance to get an additional stack of Focus Blessing whenever any blessings are obtained, including Focus Blessing itself. In addition to our base trait that gives us blessings every 2 seconds, there are many ways to gain blessing stacks. This is excellent, as it means we could consistently maintain 100% stacks of Focus Blessing. But that's not even the best part yet. The second effect of Predicted Harvest gives us twice more chance for our main skill to deal double damage for 4 seconds if Divine Blessing consumes max stack of Focus. And with the ability to maintain max stacks of Focus Blessing because of the first line, it becomes even easier to trigger this effect. At level 50, Predicted Reincarnation allows us to activate Divine Punishment whenever we deal double damage. 
Additionally, every enemy hit by divine punishment will result in the recovery of two stacks of focus blessing. This means that if six stacks of focus blessing were consumed during divine punishment, all of the lost focus blessing can be instantly recovered if divine punishment hits at least three enemies. This synergizes well with the level 32 predicted harvest trait, as it gives us a 50% chance to gain another focus blessing stack whenever the effect is activated. Things just took a turn for the better, because before reaching level 50, you had to manually cast divine punishment to be able to chain all of these effects. Now, you can forget about it because it automatically happens. At level 62, we have the option of selecting between two traits, predicted hope and predicted sacrifice. Both offer significant damage buffs, so let's examine them. Predicted Hope grants a 35% increase in Divine Punishment cooldown recovery speed, and 50% additional damage to the next main skill, for every stack of Focus Blessing, consumed by Divine Punishment. That means if 8 stacks of Focus Blessing were consumed, this results in a 400% damage boost to the main skill. This sounds promising, however, we are not going to scale with the additional damage stat, making it less useful to us. We will better understand damage scaling as we delve further into the discussion. Predicted Sacrifice, on the other hand, recovers tenacity and agility blessings equal to half the number of consumed focus blessing. For example, if 8 stacks of focus blessing were consumed, 4 stacks of tenacity and agility blessings are automatically regained. These blessings gives us some speed and damage reduction, but this is made even more impactful because of the level 32 predicted harvest trait which triggers every time a blessing is gained, leading to maintaining 100% of focus stacks almost all the time. Additionally, we receive a minor boost of 40% extra damage when divine punishment is activated, affecting all sources of damage, not just our main skill. This is a noteworthy benefit. Let's choose Predicted Sacrifice to solidify our Focus Blessing gains, as we will be able to obtain a damage buffing trait in the next level. The standout feature at level 80 for Thea is Farewell Prophecy. Although Predicted Justice may seem decent, Farewell Prophecy surpasses it by far. Instead of discussing Predicted Justice, I'll immediately delve into Farewell Prophecy. The first line effect of Farewell Prophecy, is the instant activation of Divine Punishment when the maximum stack of Focus Blessing is consumed. This makes it easier to determine, if Divine Punishment has triggered the added benefits, from Level 32's Predicted Harvest's increased chance for double damage, and Level 62's Predicted Sacrifice's half the consumed Focus Blessing, and 40% additional damage boost. In my experience, Divine Punishment has always been cast instantly. This leads me to believe that, with just the traits maintaining our stacks, we are effectively keeping the Focus Blessing at its maximum. The second aspect of Farewell Prophecy, is the key to reaching 2.1 billion damage. Each stack of Focus Blessing, increases the chance by 8% to turn the double damage dealt, into quadruple damage. This is the cornerstone of our build, and, we need to be aware of all the contributing factors, to maximize the chances of quadruple damage. Let's wrap this up by selecting Farewell Prophecy, and in the next chapter, we will discuss all the stats necessary to maximize our chances of dealing quadruple damage. When we discussed the as traits, we have determined that specific conditions must be met in order to trigger quadruple damage. When building out our stats, it's important that we are covering all of these conditions to maximize our chance. Let's go through the conditions. The first step is to deal double damage. For Thea, the first way to build this up, is with Focus Blessings. Each Focus Blessing, gives us plus 4% more chance to deal double damage. This means that if we have 10 Focus Blessings, we get 40% chance to deal double damage. For the rest of the discussion, I am going to require and assume that we have a minimum of 10 Focus Blessings. And, I would definitely suggest to get more, whenever you get the opportunity. Going back, 40% chance doesn't sound like much, however, there's good news. If you remember, level 32 predicted harvest doubles our chance to deal double damage for 4 seconds, whenever divine punishment is activated. So, with 10 Focus Blessings, we actually already have 80% chance to deal double damage. 
As a side note, it's crucial to maintain the level 32 predicted harvest buff at all times. To reach 100% or more, here are additional sources of double damage chance. Fixate skill. Crafting a necklace with restless ember. Plaintive ball of thread, violet pact. Or fog scorpion. From these information, I'm going to assume that we've achieved at least 50% double damage chance, which eventually becomes 100% when predicted harvest is active. With 100% chance to deal double damage secured, let's proceed to the next stage, which is, to increase the chance to quadruple damage. Farewell Prophecy mentions two requirements for this. 1. The enemies must be hit by Divine Punishment. With the level 50 predicted reincarnation, we don't need to worry about this, as Divine Punishment is automatically cast when double damage is dealt. 2. The chance to quadruple damage is influenced by Focus Blessing, with plus 8% chance per stack of Focus Blessing owned. It's also important to note that the term owned is used, not recently consumed, unlike other buffs from Thea's kit. This might be surprising, however, do not worry, we have covered our blessing regain for this very purpose in the Hero Traits chapter. Even if Divine Punishment consumes all blessings, we will instantly regain all stacks of Focus Blessing back. Looking at this table, having 10 Focus Blessings gives us a decent chance of 80%. But I believe, we're better off having at least 12 Focus Blessings. This is because we're chaining all of these conditions together, and we want to keep the chances as high as possible. It's clear that stacking Focus Blessing is important. In fact, investing in the maximum possible stacks of Focus Blessing is recommended, as it increases both the chance of dealing double damage and quadruple damage. The optimal range for Focus Blessing stacks is between 10 and 13. All right. Congratulations on making it this far. With this out of the way, we can now move on to assembling our damage stats. Consider this formula. Our total damage is determined by the multiplier triggered and the base damage we set. Obviously, a low base damage leads to a low total damage. The good news is our damage multipliers makes it possible for us to scale our damage exponentially. Here are some stats that we can pull together to boost our base damage. Melee, physical, and any attack-related modifiers. Lightning damage modifiers. Paralysis. Skill level. Attack and cast speed. And the most impactful in my experience, multi-strike chance, and multi-strike damage. I made sure to give critical damage its own section in the graph, as it is a significant stat worth highlighting separately. Critical damage multiplies all the stats we have accumulated. By only talent trees and decent gears, you can already stack up to 500%. That's already times 5 our accumulated damage. Clearly, it is an outstanding stat to focus on in any build, and it is non-negotiable. It's important to keep in mind that critical damage is RNG. It is necessary to invest heavily in critical strike chance to guarantee consistent critical strikes. To do this, we're adding these additional stats to our build. Critical Strike Chance Have Fervor Fervor Effect And since we're already stacking up on Focus Blessings, let's get Critical Damage per Stack of Focus Blessing too. Now, in the following chapters, we will begin building our talent trees and gears. Acquiring all of these stats we've mapped out, will be our top priority. Choosing a talent tree can make or break a build. Talent nodes provide distinct boosts to a character's base stats, increasing our potential for damage. For this build, we'll be picking Goddess of Hunting For lightning damage, lightning resistance shred, and critical rating Blade Runner 
for attack speed, multi-strike chance and multi-strike damage. And finally, Warlock, for cooldown recovery and skill level buffs. Let's pick the nodes for Goddess of Hunting. The major talents should be Paralyzed, for lightning resistance shred. Impermanence, for additional min and max damage. For minor talents, I chose these. Let's pick the nodes for Blade Runner. The major talents should be Static, for attack speed buff and energy shield regain. Quick advancement, for multi-strike damage. And for minor talents, I chose Before we move on to our third talent tree, let's talk about Divine Punishment and its cooldown issues. Consider the yellow bar to represent how long Divine Punishment is on cooldown, and the green bar, to indicate how long all of its buffs are active. If Divine Punishment has a 9 second cooldown, and its buffs last 4 seconds, there is clearly a massive 5 second downtime that we will indicate on this red bar. As a reminder, during this downtime, we are losing buffs from our base trait. Final Prophecy Predicted Harvest Predicted Reincarnation Predicted Sacrifice And Farewell Prophecy This doesn't look good at all. We've worked hard to keep our damage consistently high, only to suffer through a 5 second downtime during which none of these buffs would be applied to our character. This will ruin our build. To solve this, we'll pick Merciless from the Warlock Tree. Merciless applies 15% of bonus attack and cast speed to our cooldown recovery speed. Simply put, the more attack and cast speed we have, all of our skill cooldown is also faster. Therefore, with Merciless, we should put in enough attack and cast speed until we reduce Divine Punishment's cooldown to 4 seconds. This is how it looks like when we have achieved this. Even before the buff wears off, the skill is ready to be used again. So, let's pick the nodes for Warlock. The major talents should be Merciless For cooldown recovery of all skills Off the beaten track Plus 3 skill level to all support skills. 
and for minor talents, I chose. This brings us to the end of the talent tree chapter. I hope by this point, we have helped you get a clear understanding of how Thea's kit works. It's high time we set up our skills. I'll list our active skills as well as the supporting skills that go with them. In addition, I'll include the important reasons for using each support skill, below the skill icon. Let's get started, with our main skill. Berserking Blade. A melee area attack skill, with a chance to turn into steep strike form. For support skills, put in. Raging Slash. Multi-Strike. Critical Damage Increase. Added Lightning Damage and high voltage. Next, let's also set up Spiral Strike. For support skills, put in Hardened and Periodic Burst. We'll also add in Bloodthirst. For support skills, put in Mass Effect and Mania. Next, let's also set up Bull's Rage for support skills. Mass Effect Mania and Death Will. For our last active skill, we'll get Fearless Warcry. For support skills, put in Powerful War Cry, Lion's Roars, and Increased Area. Moving on to our passive skills, let's get Fearless, Precise Elemental Resistance, Magical Source. For support skill, Selfishness. Next, let's also get Cast on Critical Strike Electrocute Precise, Thunder Imbue For support skills, put in Seal Conversion Mark And Abysmal Hatred For our last passive skill, it will be Precise, Death Pact Fixate for support skills, put in Seal Conversion and Overclock. Let's see how everything comes together now that we have all our skills in place. We always begin our attacks by using our buff and debuff skills. Start with Bloodlust, now Bull's Rage, and finally Fearless Warcry. Because these buffs last only a few seconds, we'll have to do that very quickly.
This concludes our skills chapter. See you in the next one. Our guides have always focused on understanding the base mechanic of a character and capitalizing on them to maximize our damage potential. We did this on purpose because we knew the stats of our equipment would differ. While we prefer that you use the equipment we recommend as much as possible, you are welcome to experiment with alternatives, as long as you keep to our priority stats. We'll go about it like this. In the column on the left, I'll recommend the equipment that is currently the best in slot for this build. In the first column on the right, I'll put in an alternative equipment that would be just as good. And in the rightmost column, I will add an early game option that you can get once you've unlocked the trade house. The corroded stats will be in dark purple, just like in-game. The orange markers will represent non-negotiable core stats that we must get. And grey stats, these are optional stats where we can put anything that we lack. Now that we have that settled, let's get started. Here is my recommendation for, Helmet. For armor, let's get The best necklace I recommend for this build is For gloves, I suggest getting And the belt that I advise you to get is Here is my top boots recommendation My recommended weapon choice And for our rings. For our hero relic and hero memory, I would suggest I'd like to return to focus blessings. Remember, we need at least 10 to 13 focus blessings to keep our double and quadruple damage chances high. Here's a table that shows where we get these max focus blessing stacks from the equipment I mentioned. You should be able to get at least 10 stacks with the equipment I recommended. And an additional 3 focus blessings when the effect of the place of Oracle is activated. Moving on to, Pacts. Since not everyone will be able to obtain a Pact Spirit, I wanted to skip over them. However, our damage output will be greatly improved if you possess one of these. So, here are my best picks. That brings us to the end of our equipment chapter, see you in the next. Congratulations! You've reached the final chapter of this guide. That was a lot of information to take in, so feel free to go back and review the chapters if necessary. Overall, I hope you enjoyed this guide. While this is a very good and enjoyable build to play, it does have some drawbacks. There is so much more that this build can improve on, and we are certain that we have missed some things that would actually improve this build even more. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment below so that we can include your ideas into our future guides. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.